Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of our Pokemon VGC 2019 Battle Series. I hope you're all well, having a great day and looking forward to getting some more games today with this Ultra Necrozma Xerneas team. So we kicked off with a few changes in yesterday's episode. If you missed that and would like to go back to that, check that out before coming into today's episode. I'll put a card up there for you and you can have a look at how good some of those games were that we were able to feature yesterday. And like I say, we're going to continue on with it today. Just to recap the team, we've got the Dustman, the Necrozma, the Xerneas, the Kangaskhan, Cinero, Amoongus and that type of finny. If you'd like to see a team paste and the poker paste is all down in the description below. You can go and check that out. Try it out and if you do, like I always say, leave me a comment and let me know how you get on with that team. But without further ado, let's just jump straight into today's episode. Let's get some music on and um, hop straight into it. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our first opponent and if it does, as always, I'll cut straight to it and we'll come right back when we bump into that first trainer of today's episode. So we've got our first opponent of the episode, 1428 player rating from Japan. So let's hop straight into team preview. So today we're going up against an Incineroar, Tapu Fini, Groudon, Gengar, which is potentially Mega Gengar, Dustman Necrozma, potentially that Ultra Necrozma, and Cresselia. So what are we looking at here? We've got speed control options, definitely on that Cresselia. It's got access to Icy Wind and Trick Room here to support that Primal Groudon more than anything else. And then we've got to worry about the trapping option of that potential Mega Gengar that we're going to see here. So... Um, one of the things that we could potentially do to lead out is Incineroar. Um, and Tapu Fini as well. I think Tapu Fini Incineroar is quite a nice lead for us. We're going to need, because of that Primal Groudon, we need our own Ultra Necrozma. Um, and probably Xerneas here as well. If we can get into a position late game to get the Geomancy off. And I think that's how we have to kind of look at it. Approaching that going into the late game. Um, getting that off very late. Hopefully not losing Incineroar too early on. And being able to kind of get that in. It's just leading with Incineroar Tapu Fini. It does leave our options a little bit short with what we've got to switch in against that Primal Groudon. And it might mean needing to switch in something like Xerneas to repress his Blades when just to alleviate a little bit of pressure. But at the same time, we've got to be careful around that Mega Gengar as well. When it traps us in, we're not going to be able to do very much outside of that. So we'll lock in there and um, get into this first one. It should be a lot of fun. It's a nice build that my opponent's got and an interesting one as well. Normally with the Groudon, you're gonna see the Dawn Wings Necrozma as a variant of the Ultra Necrozma rather than the, the Dusk Mane. And it's gonna be nice. You know, I said at the start of the week that on Wednesday, we're gonna change up the team, introduce Mega Salamence, Tapu Lele into the team, along with a couple of ideas of my own to kind of just rejig things going into the end of the week. So giving us a nice opportunity to kind of feature these last few changes in a couple of matches today will be good before we move on to these other Pokemon. So we will lead off with Incineroar, Tapu Fini. See my opponent lead off with the Gengar and the Cresselia there. So the Incineroar is not a bad option for us here. Um, and we can easily fake out that Cresselia. The Misty Seed boost is obviously going to give us a bit more of an option against this Mega Gengar. We're not immediately threatened by that sludge bomb as, as much as we were previously um, and we can we can go for an icy wind if we'd like to here um, and I think I probably do mm, do I want to do that or do I just predict that the Gengar protects and we go for nature's madness and a fake out into that Cresselia because the Cresselia is the one thing that my opponent's relying on heavily for their speed control it's unlikely that Cresselia has protect so going for the fake out and nature's madness into that slot is fine because the next turn then we can potentially get an icy wind off with our with our type of finny and pivot u-turn out with our incineral if if that's the option to go for we're actually seeing a helping hand come out from this cresselia kind of didn't really consider that going into this turn so avoiding any fake out damage in the rocky helmet as well something that we saw very commonly in the 2016 and before that format so nature's madness Tapu Fini is almost out of this game already, which is a bit of a shame, to be honest, because hmm, one of the things that I would probably have to do now, I'd like to get an Icy Wind off, but I really don't feel like we're going to be able to. So I'm going to have to go for something else, and like a Snarl here is going to help us against that Mega Gengar going forward, especially when we bring in a couple of our other options. Ah, Tapu Fini is so important for us there as well. I know taking the Sludge Bomb is great, but... Um, getting an icy wind off there would have been way more useful and if we'd considered maybe a helping hand on the Cresselia there would have uh, would have changed our options going into that first turn but hindsight is always a great thing um, but this is why you practice because then 
put, it instills those potential options when you're going up against these Pokemon in future, and especially if it's in a tournament session, you know, these 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 matches don't really count in regards to that. We are going to see an ally switch from the Cresselia. Uh, it's another sludge bomb, and this time into the Incineroar. So we're actually going to be able to get an icy wind off, which is really really important for us. Big 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 turn because as I said, you know, it makes. The matchup for Ultra Necrozma coming in against that Gengar now a lot better and especially paired with this Snarl, it really reduces the ability of that Mega Gengar to perform as well as it kind of wants to. Uh, we do get the speed drop there which is very useful. Now I think one thing we could potentially do is just U-turn out on that Cresselia and go for a Heal Pulse. On the off chance that Gengar scared off by that speed drop and not wanting to attack this turn that we get a Heal Pulse into our Incineroar which will see us a lot better. Um, benefit us a lot better going into these latter stages of this game. So we'll see. The Gengar might just sludge bomb. It will outspeed both both of our Pokemon going into this next turn, though, even after minus one. And that's why I didn't really want to do it turn one. But if I had done it turn one, I could have maybe went for a turn two. But then maybe my opponent's decisions for what they would do turn two would change. At least we've seen a couple of options from this Cresselia. We do see the Protect there, which is nice. Um, and we are going to get this heal pulse into the Incineroar, just prolonging that longevity of it for later in the game, especially when we need the Intimidate for that Primal Groudon that's definitely lurking in the back. It'd be nice to be able to pick up the KO on Cresselia, which we do here, and prevent it from setting up a potential Trick Room. We do take more Rocky Helmet damage with our Incineroar, but that's fine because we are able and are going to be able to get our Ultra Necrozma in here, which is pretty huge for us because we instantly put a lot of pressure onto that Gengar. Um, once we Ultra Burst, which is a big deal really, you know, that's the one big thing that you need to do, especially with this team, when we're going up against things like Mega Gengar that naturally outspeed us, we're going to be pressured straight away, so it's trying to find ways around dropping their speed and making sure that we can get into positions where we're threatening them rather than vice versa. I'd expect the Groudon to come in for my opponent here. But they may go for something like uh, Ultra Necrozma coming in, which I don't actually mind too much because as as long as it's not the Dawnwings variant, then we're not really too pressured by that. Um, I'm just going to Ultra Burst, go for the Earth Power into that slot because if the Groudon's in the back, you can't really safely switch the Groudon into that slot. Um, and I think we'll go for an Icy Wind as well. It'll put us in a better position against the Ultra Necrozma once again if we do end up bringing Azonius onto the field and just give us the option to potentially Geomancy if we want to. We've still got all four of our Pokemon, Tapu Fini on its last legs here, so it'll be nice to see it be able to get through at least one more turn, which would be nice. We've seen the Gengar switch out, it is going to be that Groudon. Okay. I don't know if I really necessarily agree with that. The Gengar has a really good time against uh, Ultra Necrozma for sure, but we still have our Incineroar on the back and the Groudon's the one thing that you want to keep around to kind of protect the Gengar from that Incineroar. I know the Ultra Necrozma probably has Earth Power, but at the same time we're probably, we're not going to be KO'd by it unless it's got Calm Mind and if it's got Calm Mind and it goes right here then its speed's going to be reduced so again it makes Xerneas' job a bit easier when it does come in, once it does Ultra Burst like it is doing here in front of us. Sunsteel Strike, where is this going? Where are you going to be into? Okay, into the Finny, yep. Now it gives us that free switch into uh, Xerneas. Now we do have to be a bit more careful about how we play Xerneas in front of this Pokemon, but we do get the Earth Power. It doesn't quite take the Groudon down, but puts it really nicely in range to uh, go down the next turn. I think I'll bring in Incineroar here, rather than anything else. Um, and we can... We can completely check that Groudon with our Earth Power. We kind of prevent the Gengar from being able to freely switch in as well. Uh, and we can we can Snarl or Fake out the opposing Ultra Necrozma. Um, hmm. I think, I mean, I could even just Z-move into the Groudon. It gets around a potential Protect here. I'm going to Z-move into it, so we guarantee the knockout there. And I'm going to just Snarl. I could U-turn actually into the, the Ultra Necrozma. It's going to be better. I think Snarling will be better because it's going to have Photon Geyser. 
Um, Earth power. And it kind of nullifies that. I know we're going a bit overkill with the, the Z move here, but if the Groudon protects, we get rid of it. Gonna have to cut this though, guys, so we'll be right back when we hit into that Groudon. Is into the Groudon, it will be more than enough to take down this like 2 HP Groudon that we're sitting in front of. But like I say, might seem a bit overkill, but because of the protect there, we can guarantee the knockout, whatever happens there. And if the Gengar switches into that Photon Geyser, then it goes down. Uh, it might seem a little bit wasteful. Oh, Sword Stance, Ultra Necrozma, no way. <laughs> oh, that is nasty. The Snarl is doing nothing in this situation. Um, and the Gengar are going to come back in now. Oh, that makes things a bit more awkward for us. Okay, so Sword Stance, Sunsteel Strike, Photon Geyser. You can't hit at Ultra Necrozma, uh, at Incineroar though. You just can't, like the Sunsteel Strike's not going to be doing enough. Although a combination of Sunsteel Strike plus Sludge Bomb could be enough. Right, I think oh, this uh, this becomes very difficult now because um, yeah, it does become very difficult now because the the Xerneas doesn't have a very good time when it comes in against this Ultra Necrozma. That changes the whole the whole dimensions of this. I mean, we could try and Trick Room. If we've got a Trick Room up here, it would be amazing. Um, but we need to guarantee that we're taking this this Gengar down this turn. I'm going to just Flare Blitz into the Gengar and Trick Room and hope we get it off. They're going to double into the Incineroar. Sunsteel Strike into that slot as well. Plus one, is it, is it going to be enough though? It's resisted. Oh, we survive! <laughs> one HP! Incineroar, the King Cat! <laughs> Yes, one HP invisible focus sash. Here we go. Should be able to get the Gengar now, and this sets the trick room sets us up. So, I mean, we said in our last episode how we got to see the utility of that trick room. Now we're seeing it in full force because the one thing that my opponent wants to do in that situation is get rid of the Incineroar. Then the Gengar has a really easy time against our Ultra Necrozma. Um, so for that reason, maybe leaving the Ultra Necrozma, the, the obvious protect there alone and going for the, the Incineroar is definitely the right thing to do there but now it leaves you in a, a really awkward position where we can just earth power and go for a well we could go for a, uh, I mean we're probably better off going for a U-turn to be honest although we'll go first and then that's not going to be great um hmm no we'll go U-turn we'll go U-turn we'll go U-turn still not over still not over by any means oh look the cross we're going to protect Okay. Okay, okay, okay. We've got five turns of this trick room. If we can get the U turn out now, the U turn now is not probably the best thing to do. Uh, Earth Power and Flare Blitz should maybe be enough to take it down. Or just uh, Earth Power and Snarl. Because this Snarl is still super effective, even though it's not doing too much. We just got to be wary about our opponent. Maybe going for that Sunseal Strike again into the Incineroar to kind of maybe snipe the. Uh, Xerneas, but we're going to get a crit there. It doesn't really make too much difference now because the Earth Power is going to be enough to pick up the knockout. And we do win the speed tie and uh, close the game out. What an exciting game for us to kick off with today. Game one. That is amazing. So very good game to my opponent. And uh, I hope you guys at home enjoyed it. That was great. So hopefully we can continue that in the next one. And give this variation of the team a nice send off before we do move on to that Mega Salamence type of Lele stuff tomorrow. Right. Let's click through. We don't want to save it. And uh, hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our next opponent. I'm really ex I like after that. I love matches like that where you're like so hyped and you can't wait to get into the next one. You can't quite click the button fast enough to get into that next game. So let's get into it. And like I say, hopefully it doesn't take too long to find an opponent. We'll click some music in. Uh, what are we going to go with here? Should we go with Cyrus? We never have that one really. So it's a nice change, I guess, um, to go into this next game with. And hopefully we can have another excellent game to kick us off with. But yeah, if it does take a little bit longer, I'll just cut to it now, guys. And we got an ex-opponent of the episode. So we're going in against a Japanese player rated 1563. And we'll go straight into that team preview. 
So we're going up against a Kyogre Domwings Necrozma. Seems to be one of those calls picking up a little bit of popularity at the minute. So we'll probably see a lot more of that as we go on through this week and into next. Salamence going to be the mega on the team type of call call. Probably the Z-Move holder alongside maybe that Ultra Necrozma, but maybe not. You can't always guarantee that there's always going to be two Z-Moves on a team. Then you've got the support cast with the Incineroar fake out support. Intimidate support alongside that Salamence that carries that ability as well. And then the stack attacker. It's going to be a mode of speed control for my opponent's side of the field with access to Trick Room, Wide Guard, and loads of things that we don't want to have to contend with. So, how are we going to approach this? Maybe, maybe it's going to be a bit harder than we... Well, I think, like, Amoongus seems really good in this matchup just for the redirection against that Dawnwings Necrozma. Um, we could take advantage of that. It gives us a nice switch in to Kyogre as well. There's Tailwind and Trick Room. So how do we get around that? I think we do need our own Ultra Necrozma for sure. Um, but maybe we leave it for more of a late game situation. Although I do feel like the stack attacker might lead. Um, we've not got much time. So let's go. Kang. No, we need Incineroar. We need Incineroar, Xerneas, Finny. And although we're not bringing Amoongus, we're going to be... <sighs> Gone Ultra Necrozma. I feel like Amoongus is, like, good here, but you're kind of tied, like, a lot of the time. Like, you are in every Pokemon game. You're like, you want your restricted, so it leaves two slots open, and you've got two slots. And I think that comes back to more of a team-building issue than anything to do with, with what you're facing. You need to like really reassess the team a lot of the time if you're coming up against these issues quite a lot i think go back to your team building and look how can i make the most out of uh, these situations how can i put other pokemon in this team that are going to kind of support in this similar way to how everything else supports but can act really good in different situations we are going to see the dawn wings and the and tapu coco come out for my opponent and one thing we could potentially do here is just fake out the coco and go geomancy we have to be scared a little bit worried about a potential trick room from that Dawnwings Necrozma. We can't ever discount that as being an option, but I feel pretty safe about doing this, and all we're gonna take is a Photon Geyser, which we'll be able to take pretty comfortably with Xerneas. Um, so I am just gonna do that. We've got no threat of Serena in the back or Tapulele to prevent this fake out. Uh, so this should be pretty seamless, um, getting this set up, and we don't need to worry, like in our last game against that Dusk main Necrozma about a, a potential Sunsteel Strike coming out. It would just be a Moongeist Beam. Um, Probably a Photon Geyser at worst from the Ultra Necrozma. But it is just going to withdraw. We're going to see it retreat. Stack attack. I hit the field now for my opponent. Which is fine. And we do get the fake out into the Coco. Um, the problem is now we do have an issue with the stack attacker being able to just set up the um, the trick room pretty, pretty straightforward. Which is not ideal for us. Um, but if they go down a trick room route... Then I have to take a turn setting the trick room up. So it means we could potentially double into them. So whether they want to do that or not is another thing. Because we could potentially Flare Blitz, Moonblast. But we've got to worry about that Coco switching out into Kyogre. Yeah, Volt switching out into Kyogre, which, would be, which wouldn't be ideal at all. Um, now I think what I will do is you turn out into the Coco and... Well, we can deny the core call going out by just Dazzling Gleaming, but we will lose Xerneas to Stack Attacker because we haven't intimidated it. Um, but I think you're probably more likely to go for, for a Trick Room here rather than anything else. Um, I'm going to U-turn into the core call and I'm going to Dazzle. Can we click in in time? I think we have just about. A time nearly ran out. Let's hope we don't take a, gy uh, a gyro ball here. And there we go. We're going to see, yeah, we're going to see the gyro ball into us. Yep. And we lose our Xerneas so quickly. Just like that. Yep. Mm hmm. Okay. It's not the worst. It's definitely not the worst situation in the world. It really isn't. It could have been a lot worse. Now the Coco's in a difficult position. We need to try and get our um, uh, 
And do we U-turn or do we just flare blitz into the stack attacker? Because the, the Coco probably hard switches out here. That would be my first and initial thoughts. Um, and how do we get around this? Uh, we could snarl. We've got to protect the Xerneas though because otherwise we just go down to a gyro ball. Um, I think we need to switch out and maybe bring in Necrozma of our own. Yeah, and just protect Xerneas. And we'll assess what, what my opponent does and what we do the following turn. <sighs> I mean, we knew that was like impending. It was going to come, but we're kind of locked in after we Geomancy and the stack attacker switches in turn one. There's the gyro ball. Yeah, and the vault switch. Light screen. I can deal with that. I can really deal with that 100%. Um, now we can earth power the stack attacker here. And it might be, you know, as, as funny as this sounds, it might be better us just going for the earth power into stack attacker and switching out our Xerneas and preserving it for later rather than just letting it go down now. Because um, we, we're kind of forced to go for a double protect. And I just, I'd rather keep Xerneas around for later. It has a better matchup against that Dawnwings Necrozma. And if we can get rid of the stack attacker, then Xerneas has a way, a way better time. I know we're, we're letting go of our Geomancy boost, but in the long term, it's a better option, I feel, than just letting it go down here. There's the Gyro Ball. Sincinor takes, like, pretty comfortably. This is like a big tie, you know? When you... When you've got a Pokemon out on the field, it's obviously the light screen is going to help that as well. Um, I'm going to see the Coco do taunt. I'm going to try and stop us setting up, I guess, or reversing that trick room, maybe. Um, but we can go for the Earth Power again into the stacks. I think this turn I'm going to switch Incineroar out, though, into, um, into Tapu Fini. Or maybe I don't, because if the Kyogre does come onto the field... Hmm, no, I, yeah, I'm going to switch out to Tapu Fini here. Get rid of the electric terrain. Uh, yeah, and one of the things I was saying is, like, you feel when you've got that setup kind of done, you're tied with that Pokemon to keep it out on the field. And I feel like sometimes even myself, and a lot of players will do this, and, you know, they'll be facing impending doom from that next turn and think, I've got it set up, I can't waste it. I don't want to waste it, so I'm, I'm not going to switch it out. I'm going to let it go down, and I'm just going to deal with it. And sometimes, for the better of the team, it's better just to go, like, for goal. Because, at the end of the day, st stat boosts come and go. But Pokemon, once they're gone, they are gone. You can't use them anymore. So sometimes it is better to, um, to utilize them while you've got the opportunity to. And keep them for later when they will be more beneficial again. Rather than just lose them up when it's easy for your opponent. Like, you don't want to be making it easy for your opponent to take things down. Uh, you want to be making it as hard as possible for your opponent to um, to make use of. We're going to get the Earth Power into this Necrozma. Um, but again, the light screen is really, really helping them out here. So, there we go. But I mean, Tapu Fini is not in a bad place right now. We do get the special defense drop as well on that, on that Dawn Wings. Um, I think this turn what we'll do is Nature's Madness into the Kyogre. Uh, how many turns of Trick Room we've got left? We can't protect. That's the only problem with uh, Dawn Wings and Crossman. It's the only issue here. And I don't really want to switch Incineroar in. And I don't want to switch Xerneas in, to be honest, to deal with either. I think if I had to switch anything in, I'd rather switch in the Incineroar. Um, and keep our Restricteds and just go for that Nature's Madness into the Kyogre slot. We'll probably underspeed the Kyogre as well. Poor Incineroar, but if we see maybe an Origin Pulse, it misses. And there's the Ultra Burst. Okay, so it's actually bursting. Don't want it to stay in its, its normal form. So it has access to that Z move the next turn. 
It does make it a bit more difficult for us. Origin Pulse. Incineroar Voids! RNG God shining down on us today. I mean, it's a bit unfortunate for my opponent, but we will take that because it makes life so much easier for us going <laughs> going into these next turns, especially once the Trick Room ends. Do get the uh, Nature's Madness off and an Earth Power. It's a good shout for my opponent. We do just survive, though. We've got access to that Fake Out as well the next turn, if we'd like to. Um, we've got to be a bit more careful, though, with how we approach... Uh, these next turns because we do have the fake out but both targets on the other side of the field are really threatening us right now um i think we could bring in uh oh no do we just fake out the necrozma and got icy wind we could heal pulse as well we could heal pulse it's just we leave the kyogre open i do feel like the kyogre maybe switches out um, are we better just Icy Winding here? I think we might be, yeah. Let's go Icy Wind. It opens the door up for our Necrozma when it comes in on our Xerneas. Even though we've got the Stack Attacker to deal with in the back. So, there's the Fake Out. Icy Wind. And this Kyogre probably goes for another Origin Pulse here. Yep, it does hit this time though. Fortunately for Incineroar, it is going to go down. But it does open the door for us, especially to get that Xerneas onto the field. And that's the one thing we need to get onto the field now. Because we can pressure and really threaten that Ultra Necrozma. We're kind of forcing it, forcing it out almost. Um, I think if the stack attacker wasn't in the back, I'd be inclined to go for another Geomancy here. But with it, it's, an, it's such an easy switch in for my opponent. It makes it very difficult to kind of to do that. Um, so I am just going to go Dazzling Gleam. And I think we'll go Heal Pulse into Xerneas. Just to make sure that we... Oh, uh, no. This is the wrong thing to do. Because we're going to Heal Pulse before the Kyogre can attack. Uh, we would have been better Icy Wind in. This is what this is like a good lesson. Like always, make sure that you're actually thinking about the turn before you click, mindlessly clicking in. Like I've just done, uh, because we could have kept the pressure up. Now the stack attacker comes in. We could have even went for a nature's madness here. We get the dazzling gleam. But the thing is, I guess we're going to be able to, yeah, heal pulse the next turn. Ooh, thunder! At least Zernius gets away with it there. And if we lose Finny here, we do just survive. Okay. Hmm. We want to try and deny the Trick Room again because that's the biggest, the biggest problem for us right now. But I don't think we're going to have enough in the tank to be able to do that, unfortunately. Um. Could we bring in... Oh, we could bring in Duskman the Cosma. Um, yeah. And go for just a Nature's Madness into the Kyogre. Yeah, let's do that. And it's a good job because we haven't Ultra Burst yet. So it puts us in a better position if that Trick Room does go up this next turn. I think we need to preserve Azonius no matter what. we still got to keep in mind that there's a Z-move at the disposable of the disposal of that ultra necrozma as well so it's just madness we're gonna get that into the kyogre origin pulse it does hit both targets that does so much to dusk man and this probably will kill us as well uh, i mean yeah so how is that Origin Pulse doing so much? That is ridiculous. That is so ridiculous. So ridiculous. There's nothing we can do now. I mean, there is literally nothing we can do. We can Dazzle and Gleam hop that. I mean, even a crit onto that stack attack is probably not going to be enough for us to uh, take it down. But a little bit disappointing to end with this team. Um, but it's just one of them things. And we definitely could have played it a little bit differently. 
I think the Amoongus here would have been and made a, a way bigger difference to this match for us. And just being able to support Xerneas that bit better. Once we've got the Geomancy boost off, we get the Amoongus in. And we've got that redirection support against the stack attacker. Potentially if it hasn't got the um, safety goggles. Which would give us that little bit of room to maybe make a little bit more use of Xerneas as well. So um, I'm going to see the Kyogre protect. I can't get over the damage of that Origin Pulse. There's a Gyro Ball. This should be game though. Yeah, good game to my opponent. The Origin Pulse killed us on the switch in there. Maybe we shouldn't have switched in when we did. Um, but nevertheless, that is how it's ended. We can only learn from it and go forward and move forward with the team. But that is going to wrap up the Mega Kangaskhan variant of this team. And tomorrow, like I've been saying all week, we will be introducing that Mega Salamence and Tapu Lele to the fold. So it's going to be a lot of fun playing that. Do make sure you catch the episode tomorrow when it does drop. As I say, the variation with the Ultra Necrozma Xerneas will be a very fun one to take into the end of the week. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. And before I forget, I've got a poll up on the YouTube channel at the moment asking what team, core team you would like to see played going into next week because we will have a brand new team going into next week's episode. So do go over there, vote. If there's nothing there that you would like to see played, make sure just to comment and I will see what I can do and make sure that we do feature it going forward at some point in the Ultra Series, if not next week. But uh, the winner will be announced, obviously, on Sunday evening and then we'll go into Monday uh, with that brand new core and it's going to be very exciting to explore a new build going into this format. So thank you so much for tuning in guys. Have a great day and I will see you all for another episode tomorrow. So until then take care and bye bye.